So today is April 29th, 2021, and it has been one year since the passing of my late boyfriend, Seth Winter, and I still think about him every day, and the pain doesn't necessarily go away, but I have learned a lot from him and our relationship, and, <clears throat> and I also learned a lot about myself um, after losing him and I just want to share that with you guys because my channel is a place where I want to not only help myself but others as well so I find it important to talk about touching subjects like this and this channel has also helped me deal with the grieving of losing Seth and um, I know he'd want me to be smiling and remembering him in a positive way and he just always wanted me to be happy and positive. He never wanted to see me upset, even when I would be in my dark moods or in my gothic state and just be so emotional and so negative for no reason. He would just always want me to remember the good side of life and that's something I always appreciated about him. He was always so gentle and loving and um and he gave the best hugs ever like literally the best i felt like i was taken to like outer space love me take me to outer space like literally out of this world amazing and i just really miss him and i miss talking to him i felt like no one knew me better than him he just understood me like no one else we could just look at each other and know exactly what the other was thinking. We were literally like the female and male version of each other, which probably made us really toxic at times, but it was just so nice to find someone who you feel like your soul aligns with. And, um, and I don't know, I just really appreciate that. I've never had someone tell me that I was the most attractive when I was happy before. And that's such a understated compliment because Normally you think you want to hear, oh, you're beautiful, you're this or that, which he would say, I would love it when he would call me angel because now he's literally my angel. But when someone compliments you for your happy state, that really shows you that they want to see you happy. And Seth had the best smile. And from the moment we met, we just had this instant connection. Later when we started dating, we both admitted that it was like love at first sight. And that was really cute, but um, yeah, we had met in December 2018 and I had just come home from college for a winter break. And we met through my best friend's boyfriend. And I remember I was so bummed out about being in Maryland because I don't know, I just didn't want to be back home. So I was really upset about that. But then when I met him, I was just really happy and we just would talk to each other nonstop, texting each other all the time. And then I went away on New Year's Eve for a trip with my family. And then when I left, he kind of realized that I was going to be gone a lot of the time when I'm in California. So he didn't really want to pursue a relationship, which made me sad because I really liked him, but I agreed we were on completely opposite sides of the country. So that would have been hard to maintain a relationship. And we both had done long distance relationships before, so we didn't want to do that again. But um, literally a month later, he came to visit me in California and he came with one of his best friends. And I was kind of thinking like, why would you bring your friend? But it was his first time coming to California, I think. and. So he didn't really want to stay at an Airbnb all alone. So he brought his friend with him and me, him and his friend hung out and we got closer and we would have deep conversations like just us two and we learned a lot about each other and um, I don't know, we just realized that we really liked each other. I don't know, I just felt like the universe brought us back together so many times and we both wished so badly that we lived in the same state. And I even remember he would mention us moving in together and getting a place in LA like really early on. And I would just be like, no, we're going way too fast. Fast, 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 fast. 
and I would just be like, no, we're going way too fast. But a part of me was kind of like, hmm, maybe. But no, I knew we had to be practical and wait. And I feel like our relationship had so many ups and downs because we were so far apart from each other so many times throughout the year. And that led to a lot of trust issues and a whole bunch of other stuff. But I think we always wanted to be a part of each other's lives. That was always what we always wanted. Whenever we would fight, we would always come back to each other and do the blocking and unblocking game, which I admit I started, but it's crazy. Um, but like a lot of people say, when you're passionate about something, you get angry and I don't know, that's how love is, I guess. And love can be complicated. And there were a lot of people who didn't want to see us together, like friends, family. And I think it was because a lot of times we were dealing with our own issues that we weren't really prioritizing. And we wanted to kind of fix each other, but we actually had to fix ourselves first, which was hard for us to realize. And it was so hard for us to stay apart. Like it really was. And we both had experienced love before, but it was never really anything like this. Like for us, we immediately knew that we were meant to be in each other's lives. Like I remember he would tell me that um, his best friend who had recently passed away, um, Alex Petro, he even has a song dedicated to him, which is really good. I love it. New kicks, just a match. The checker print on my Louis backpack. And he had a best friend named Alex Petro who passed away um, a couple of years ago, I think probably three years now, maybe two. And Seth really struggled with that. And from the moment I met him, he would talk about him all the time. And they were actually supposed to move to Florida together before Alex passed away. But I remember he told me that he felt like there was a reason why we met. And um, he would tell me that he felt like Alex would have wanted us to be in each other's lives. And yeah, he felt like we were supposed to be in each other's lives for a while. He even told me a bunch of times that he saw us getting married. And I knew he was serious when he said it in front of one of his best friends. And I didn't want to admit to it at the time, but I did see it too. And it was really touching that he was just so sensitive and gentle all the time, and I love that about him. And one of my favorite memories with him was on his 20th birthday. We were driving around, um, I think we were going to lunch or something, and we were listening to each other's music. And he was so proud to play his songs, and he looked so happy, and he couldn't stop smiling. We were both so happy in that moment. I just loved it. He had the biggest smile on his face and he was just like, what do you think of my music? What do you think? And I was just like, honestly, I love it. And we just believed in each other. He always believed in me with my music. And I actually started making music in November slash December, 2018. And right before I met Seth, I made a song about my college crush. But after that, he was my muse for almost all my songs. And I remember the first time I told him my songs were about him. I was in LA going to dinner with one of my best friends and I was texting him and he was stressed out because one of his friends was at the hospital and he was really nervous and all this stuff. So I texted him being like, has a girl ever written a song about you? And he was like, no, why? And at the time, my songs Los Angeles and Lonely were out. So then I responded, oh, well, Lonely and Los Angeles are about you. And he was like, what? No way. Oh my gosh, BRB, I'm about to listen right now. And I don't know if that helped him in that situation, but he was pretty excited about it. And yeah. And I remember my friend was like, that is so Taylor Swift of you, which I guess it kind of was. <laughs> and I remember he would always text me being like, I'm listening to Megan Lex right now, and I thought it was the cutest thing ever. Oh. He would constantly be like, let's go to the studio, let's go to the studio, and all this stuff. And I don't know, he always pushed me to be more creative. He told me that I should start a fashion blog because he really liked my style, and I loved his style. He had the best shoe game, which is like amazing. I love that. I love shoes. And we just complimented each other so well. We would complete each other's sentences. And sometimes when we would text, we would text the same thing at the same time. It would be so crazy. And yeah, it was just really nice to have someone like that. 
that I could talk to whenever and connect with on a romantic level as well. And I remember he was so happy on his birthday and I just loved seeing him happy. I always loved seeing him happy and for his 21st birthday, we were supposed to go on a trip to Florida. I remember he would always tell me that he would want to take me on a cruise because when he was younger, he had the best time on a cruise with his family and he wanted to share that with me. And I thought that was so cute and special. And I also wanted to plan him a surprise birthday party, which he low-key knew about and wanted because he would always talk to me about inviting this friend or that friend if he ever had a surprise party. And he knew how much I loved birthdays. And before he passed, I was so excited to celebrate his 21st birthday together. But I was so blessed because for my 21st birthday, my friend's mom gifted me a cake for him and for me. And it was a beautiful cake that I'm sure he would have loved. It had a chain with the S on it. And it was honestly one of the most beautiful cakes I've ever seen. And it was such a nice gift. And it felt like he was there in spirit. Wow. So that was really nice to have. I remember one time he gifted me this bracelet that was actually his dad's necklace chain and he turned it into a bracelet and he made two, one for me, one for him. And it was so sweet and sentimental. And his dad was someone who meant a lot to him. So I don't know, it just really pulled on my heartstrings and my emotional side. And yeah, Seth just helped me not feel so alone sometimes. And he was always there for me whenever I needed him. And I just loved how thoughtful and sensitive he was. And I just really miss him. And, and I'm so blessed and thankful my friend's mom did that for me. And speaking of my friend's mom, she's actually a life coach. She was there for me the night Seth passed. And it was so weird. For a few days before he passed, I just had the weirdest anxiety in my stomach. I just had a feeling like something was going to happen. I didn't know what it was, but... I was telling everyone around me, like I was telling my friend, like everybody, like her mom, her dad, like something's gonna happen. Like I feel like something's gonna happen. And then I'm taking a shower one night and I get out of the shower and in the shower, this kind of sounds weird, but I was just having a lot of flashbacks about him and I just kept picturing his face and I don't know. And I get out of the shower and I get a call from an unknown number. It's a blocked number. <laughs> and it's one of his ex-roommates and I think his number was blocked which is why it was on a blocked number I don't know and he tells me that Seth passed away and I'm just like no no way like you're lying like I don't believe you stop lying you're not like it's not funny I was just in complete denial I was just like stop that's not funny like you're lying all this stuff and he was just like no I'm being serious so then I hung up and called one of Seth's best friends and I was like, is it true? Is Seth dead? And um, he just started crying and he was like, yeah. And I just started bawling my eyes out and I passed the phone. And, <clears throat> and I just started bawling my eyes out and I passed the phone to my friend's mom um, so that she could talk to him because I couldn't really talk to him. But he couldn't really talk. Um, he was like out of it and couldn't really talk and um yeah I was completely heartbroken and days before um literally days before like th four or six days before maybe less he messaged me saying that he wanted to come visit me in California telling me everything I wanted to hear throughout our entire two-year relationship saying all these sweet stuff saying how much he loved and cared about me and all the times he felt like he was hurt. He just explained so many things I was confused about because after Christmas, we had gotten in a big argument. And so we had only talked in increments after that. Like we had called each other like a couple times, but like never really had a full on conversation about what happened because he was in Maryland and I was in California. So. We weren't really like talking all the time. Then 
a couple days before he dies, he tells me everything I wanted to hear, everything, like saying how he saw us being together forever and like saw us getting married and how he believed in our future together. He was just telling me how much he missed me and how much he wanted to come take a flight to LA. And this was like April, 2020. So this was like Corona time, like quarantine was very serious. So by him saying that, I just knew that maybe he did mean everything he was saying. And I don't know, it just felt so nice to hear all those things. And it just confirmed everything I felt about us being soulmates. And I don't know, it just, it felt so nice to hear. And then a couple of days later, I get a phone call that he passed away and um, I just couldn't believe it. And um, he passed away from an overdose. And um, substance abuse is something that a lot of people don't really talk about or are too scared to talk about. But if you or anyone you know is struggling with it, don't be afraid. Don't wait until it's too late. Please do your best to help them as early as you can. I had a friend in high school who struggled really badly with substance abuse and depression. And I wish I knew more about it back then so that I could have helped her more because now looking back, I feel like I could have helped her more and it makes me feel a little guilty, but I also have to realize that a lot of people don't want to help themselves unless they want to be helped. They themselves want the help themselves. And yeah, that was really hard for me. I remember afterwards, I was just lost completely. I was just like, what am I supposed to do now? Like, this is my best friend. This is my soulmate. This is my boyfriend. Like, how can I like go on? It was so hard for me to find hope and look at the bright side. I felt like my world was ending and um... So the next day, me and my friend's mom, she's a life coach, so she's really skilled at dealing with people's emotions and dealing with grief. So she helped me make a flower bouquet for him. So I made it using all of his favorite colors, orange and blue. That's why I'm wearing a blue and orange shirt. It has an orange strap and it's pale blue. And yeah, I'm wearing it in honor of him because these are his favorite colors. Oh, also I have a blue gem right here. And yeah, this time last year I was making the flower bouquet. Um, and I just remember while I was making it, I was just crying and trying to make it look pretty, but also just so sad. And it turned out beautiful. I love the heart shape. And I can't remember exactly which flowers they were, but I was so happy they were blue and orange. <laughs> And I also spray painted a couple flowers gold because he loved gold jewelry. And I also wrote him a letter and I put that letter on a statue somewhere in downtown Los Angeles. And afterwards, my friend's mom gave me this beautiful white dress to put on and I got dressed up and I went to this park in Los Angeles called Echo Park and I took the flower bouquet and the letter and I also brought with me his favorite beer, Blue Moon, and I poured that into the water. and I pour that into the water to remember him and feel his energy. I remember how much he loved Blue Moon. And, and after I poured the Blue Moon, I took the flower bouquet and did a little prayer to myself and did a little meditation. And then I put it into the water and the most crazy thing happened after I put it into the water. Literally the second I put it into the water, bell started ringing.
and it was about 6 30 p.m when the bell started ringing and it's such a coincidence because seth was born at 6 30 a.m approximately and yeah it was just a beautiful special moment and it really gave me hope because i know that his energy will always be with me and it was just a nice day that day and it was bittersweet because obviously i don't have him anymore but energy never dies and seth will always be in my heart and yeah that's basically um the story of me and seth and to remember him i got east side tattooed right here you can kind of see it and Eastside is the name of our favorite song. It's by Benny Blocko, Halsey, and Khalid. And yeah, whenever we would listen to that song, we would always think of each other. And when we would listen to it together, it always went down, not gonna lie. It was just such a special song to us. And in the song, it says, she used to meet me on the East Side. And it also says, he used to meet me on the east side and we used to meet each other on the east side, you know, so it was just a really special song to us and sometimes I'll be thinking about him and I'll be at the grocery store and that song will literally come on and it's such a coincidence and I just know he's always with me and he always will be and I'll always have the amazing memories we shared together and I'm so blessed and thankful for all those memories and please, please, please don't forget to tell your loved ones how much they mean to you and how much you appreciate them and how much you love them and yeah you never want to wait until it's too late you never know when it's going to be someone's last day so honestly live every day like it's your last and if you can please donate to the Seth J Winter Memorial Foundation it's going to be linked down below and the foundation supports young teens who are suffering with substance abuse and it gives them a lot of opportunities to discover hope and also have the chance to have better education and yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Have a great night, day, evening, afternoon, morning, whatever it is, wherever you are. Thank you so much. I tell him you gotta go by. Maybe it's time to go by. This shit ain't no lullaby. You ain't coming home tonight. Set the tracks, we on it, yeah. We on, we on the beat. We fucking it up in the streets. Studio. Everywhere I fucking go. I got the drove. The loudest pack, the loudest gas. Everything on me, it's new, it's foreign, it's fresh, it's fast. You don't got this, you wish you had it, you ain't got no bag. Set the tracks, boy, I'm on this mic, I'm going mad. Hey, you rappers don't want it. I stamp that. Pull up on me, boy, I got a trick up in this hat. The paparazzi, let's talk about it. Baby, I. Can you believe every single day these famous people and young TikTokers who are from 16 to 20s are fearful that they're gonna get their picture taken or have a part of their life exposed? And it's just not right. With social media becoming bigger than ever, it's almost impossible for any of these people to have any privacy. And it's not fair. Let's take a look. Hey Addison, how's it going? I'm good, thank you. Good. Hey, are the rumors true that um that Bryce cheated? I, I don't think I want to talk about All the paparazzi wants to do is break a story, but it's not their story to break. And speaking of stories, I have my own story to share. Dirt around here. My pet's racing, I'm a